Vale, perfecto. Bueno, buenos días a todos. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for coming. One more day. Okay, perfecto. Buenos días a todos. Gracias por estar aquí otro día más. Thanks for coming. My name is Enrique Serrano. Here is the uh, web uh, site. Uh, and I'm co-founder of uh, Mundo Hacker, uh, something that we founded uh, 10 years ago. There were five or six of us working in an office from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day. So uh, we. Uh, well, we've been doing a lot of work in order to, uh, well, we spent many hours uh, doing things and we ended up uh, hacking for TV, walking around the streets with a hidden camera on us. And this is what uh, made us uh, arrive here to where we are, and we're very much involved in this world of uh, cybersecurity. I'm also within uh, security IBM for Spain, Portugal, uh, and, uh, Israel, and Greece. And I started, well, I've been working for IBM uh, for five years now. I used to do um, pen testing projects, ethical um, hacking, and they started also doing uh, product uh, demos. And after which um, I um, went into the uh, vending sector. Y luego comentaros también que estoy, me gusta mucho la parte de emprendimiento. De... I also uh, started uh, working in the area entrepreneurship and innovation, and I'll be giving you some uh, tips uh, in case you want to set up your own business. And so, always, I've always worked in an area related to technology. Uh, because uh, technology is wonderful for many things that people don't even imagine. So thank you very much for coming. I know that uh, there are families uh, here with us, uh, people who are no uh, pr practitioners in this area, children who have got engineers, all sorts of profiles, all sorts of people, and also professionals in their uh, world, and uh, there have been some wonderful presentations. And um, first of all, I'm going to be telling you what I do outside IBM, because in the end, IBM is my core work. And uh, some time ago, I gave a conference in Madrid. Uh, was in uh, this uh, uh, show on TV. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, uh, that uh, program, we were uh, showing how to use technology in order to chase uh, bad guys. And uh, so we were able to help many people, and we felt very good with the program. And uh, we also helped people who had problems with technology. But this is uh, very important. Uh, uh, as well as uh, the whole awareness uh, process, the uh, technological gap has made it to everybody. Even uh, grandparents uh, uh, have a cell phone and they go on the web and all of a sudden, how come anybody is trying to hack me? What? I didn't do anything to them. How come I'm being attacked? Um, so we're helping uh, people with uh, technology. Some people don't use technology properly because they don't know how to do it, and they run into trouble. So what you can see here on the slide, uh, this little box uh, that I'm going to uh, show you later on, I'm going to give you the details. This is um, a company for um, health food. Uh, take away health food. And um, so I'm part of the technological part of the company, orders, and well, many things. It's a different thing, I don't know, where technology has a very important role to play. And uh, since I have a technical background and uh, take care of uh, Android and iPhone uh, applications, this is uh, something that I published uh, some time ago. And then here, the uh, feathers, the, it's a brand, clothing brand that I've had with uh, friends for a long time. And um, 
But this business also entails a technological part. In Feathers, we've uh, done something that's really important, and that is that when an order comes to our website, this order is linked to the uh, warehouse uh, that uh, gets in touch with the uh, delivery uh, people on uh, motorbikes. Uh, so it's something that works, uh, that uh, operates, uh, that runs on its own. And it works uh, automatically. So one of the uh, keys for entrepreneurship is to uh, devote time to it. So uh, this uh, is something that can we send orders all over the country, all over Spain. Uh, and this uh, use of technology is not just for cybersecurity, but also for uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, because one can always uh, think differently out of the box and uh, give the whole thing a twist. Uh, and there's also and this is uh, well uh, what you can see on this line are different projects uh, different uh, uh, businesses as uh, we can see uh, there's also uh, this uh, company that sells uh, covers for uh, your uh, machines, uh, cameras, that is for your uh, computers, cell phones, so you can cover your uh, camera, uh, not be able not to be uh, seen. So, so what I do, what do I do for IBM? I brought you an example. We do some uh, very nice uh, things. Right now, we're working in uh, artificial intelligence and uh, cognitive systems because it's not just interesting to uh, detect uh, a threat, but uh, we have some cognitive uh, tools that uh, go a step. Uh, uh, further, it's not just knowing that uh, somebody's in your system. Right now, we we see what uh, actions, what things must be done. I don't know if you knew this, but when you go into many important banks in Spain or around the world, there's a solution, and it's the following. For instance, at the beginning, the session says in blue, this is what people normally do. Uh, once uh, you learn how to use the mouse, whenever you log in, your user's name, and, uh, and then tab, and then we move the mouse uh, to go to log login. And the normal thing is to use the blue thing. So uh, one of your uh, valid uh, session uh, starts, you go to the red uh, tab the abnormal user behavior. Here we need to be, we're not sure 100% of what's happening. But, and then there's the known uh, frost behavior when you go to this uh, black part. This generates an alert and you're telling banks uh, with 90% uh, of uh, probabilities this user is uh, who he or she says it is. Uh, uh, some, uh, if you do weird things with your mouse, the bank may call you and say, is that you? Same thing with uh, mobile uh, applications. Everybody has a different way to move your hand every time you uh, click on a key. Uh, and uh, here, uh, we know whether it's you or not, uh, user's name, uh, password, and for instance, you change hands. And these are, uh, so these are behaviors uh, uh, according to which you tell the bank, well, this is the right user, so he, he is the one he's supposed to be. So this is just a little example, and it's not um, just to do publicity. But just to tell you, there's the whole world uh, behind with cognitive full, uh, tools. 
and uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, open source online tools. For instance, video analysis, uh, face recognition, there's a whole bunch of uh, tools that are very easy to use with a great potential. So what are we concerned with in cybersecurity? This is something that I always tell when I go and see a client. This is uh, the ex-secretary uh, of defense of the US, Donald uh, Rumsfeld. Uh, there are known uh, knowns, uh, these are things we know that we know, there are known unknowns, that is uh, to say there are things that we don't know, we don't know, and um, there are some things that I don't know about and that, and, uh, that uh, I don't even imagine I must know. This is uh, something that was done or said in a non-technological um, scenario. Now, we speak about cyber war, etc., but uh, I don't like uh, being, uh, uh, I don't uh, like to uh, scare you or anything, but just to give you some figures, not just to tell you something and ask you to believe me, I brought this, this is a report we bring every year in IBM, every year there are security analysts who just do uh, research uh, and uh, investigations, uh, but this is research, this, these are the types of uh, threats we've seen in the last few years, this is from March. Uh, 2014, uh, 15, 16, mm. light green, these are uh, XSS uh, attacks in yellow, as uh, QLI uh, attacks, and also uh, phishing. As you can see, there's a color that's predominant uh, color. Uh, this is the one, 2016 that's everywhere and it says unknown and means that most attacks are, cannot be classified so and i think that this is very interesting for those of you who want to do work in the area of uh, cyber security this is the right time to do so it's curious you see that most of the dots uh, are uh, undisclosed uh, we see that more and more we know less. There's more money invested, and we realize that we still need to invest uh, much more. But let's go beyond this. These are the attacks or new vulnerabilities uh, detected in the last few years since 2010. In 2010, there were. Uh, uh, Thousands, 9,000. Now there's uh, about 10,000 uh, vulnerabilities or uh, detected um, as a chart you see from 2010 to 2016. So uh, before this, we don't know. Uh, the minister said that there are things and attacks that are taking place and that we don't know of that could be happening right now. For instance, uh, in, uh, uh, encrypted uh, communications, whoever knew about this uh, could be spying on them. Who knows, in 2017 maybe we're being listened uh, uh, through the mic or maybe they're seeing us through the cameras and nobody can make sure or ensure or tell us that we're not being uh, spied on. So just to tell you that uh, from the point of view of uh, from a professional standpoint, there's a huge uh, niche. Some people are saying technology is going to take uh, jobs away from us, and in the end, there's not going to be uh, uh, we won't be able to find a job. I believe that society will keep evolving. New uh, work opportunities will uh, come up. Uh, and um, we are not taking uh, uh, jobs away from uh, uh, security analysts. Not at all. Um, people are going to be able to specialize more. In the end, like I was saying at the beginning, this is uh, an area, a domain, a sector that we love. 
Yesterday I was talking to people and to the winners and you can tell they enjoy doing what they do. I'm sure that when they get home they keep on uh, uh, doing research and investigating. And this kid you, kid you can see here, you may say, well, he doesn't seem to be having a, a ball. But just by looking at the stickers on his computer, I can tell you that he is having a great time. Maybe he uh, looks tired because he hasn't slept for the last uh, three days. <laughs> because he's been doing something he loves doing. So uh, when there is passion, you'll make it. I know. Of course, you need to devote time, but uh, training is important. You need to go to college, you need to have a degree, you need vocational training. But in cybersecurity, I see people in high position analyzing people they uh, want to hire, and then privately they tell me, I'm not asking degrees from them, I want people who really know what they do. Of course, training is needed, but it's true that there are very brilliant people who are sitting at home who are very good in cybersecurity, and uh, they have opportunities. But I always invite, I always say that it's important to have something it's basic, a degree is something, because uh, people don't know you. Uh, and they need to know that there's something behind uh, the person they are paying. But there are so many different profiles, you know. There's something, there's always something, because in the end, uh, training, when you go to a company, you're not just showing that you know, but uh, see that you end what you started, you're interested in what you're doing, and uh, I think that this is really interesting. It's true that uh, teamwork, for instance, uh, in uh, Bologna, uh, they are encouraging uh, teamwork. And I have an anecdote. Please raise your hand who's ever come across this uh, situation. You work in a team uh, with uh, 10 people. There's always uh, somebody who works very little or doesn't work at all. And that one person is never you. Does that happen to you? Yes. Uh, I'd like to know this uh, one person who's uh, lazy. I'd like to interview this uh, person. And well, these are just anecdotes. You know? Many people tell me, well, okay, and how do I begin? How do I get started? Uh, how do I uh, get to uh, work for IBM? What do I need to do? Well, the first thing, and by the way, I'd also like to uh, thank CyberCamp and these institutions for having invited me here, because uh, these uh, companies, these institutions, uh, uh, public institutions, I think that it's extremely important for countries not just Spain, it's really important to, to see that there's a lot of uh, public investment in cybersecurity, not just cybersecurity, but also technology, um, the Internet of Things, many other things. So if we specialize in something, there's opportunities. There's something I always uh, tell uh, that is uh, competitions like the ones we saw yesterday is very good because these are scenarios that allow you to learn. And this is a very complex thing, and I'm sure you've thought about this. How are we going to train hackers in Spain if law doesn't allow you to hack from Spain? These people that would uh, play chess since they were little, and I don't know, they've been playing. Uh, but now, what do we do? If uh, somebody's uh, hacking, the police uh, will uh, knock on the door tomorrow. So what do we do? How do we learn? So these are things, uh, so CTFs are very important, you capture the flank thing. Uh, so, uh, uh, CTFs are a very important thing, and um, another thing is the uh, work, war games, uh, I've used them 
football, especially in English. There's a couple in Spanish, I guess, and maybe more. I don't know. War games, these are websites where you have several challenges ahead of you, uh, divided and broken down to uh, specialities. If you type uh, cyber war games, uh, there's uh, different, uh, 10 different levels, and you, one by one, the first ones are super, super easy, and then you keep on advancing, and then uh, they start getting more difficult. And the good thing is uh, that uh, when you cross a certain level, they let you mentor those who come behind you, uh, those who come after you. So, and in a collaborative way, you can learn, you can train people, and I recommend people to go in here. And then finally, what I was saying. Bueno, ya hablando de todo el mundo, se sabe que hay países que tienen edificios enteros. So people with hackers. And right now there's a whole bunch of uh, regulations that uh, make it compulsory to hire people um, have uh, jobs in the field of uh, cybersecurity. There's a whole bunch of uh, opportunities, and we, if we specialize, we'll probably become leaders in 10 years. So, speaking about uh, career plans, let's uh, take five, ten minutes and think. What am I doing right now? What am I studying? What am I stu studying this for? And when do I want to see results? Uh, companies, you can go to your boss and say, what's going on? What, why am I sitting here? Will I end up being uh, head of uh, pen testers or hackers? Mm, so let's not waste time doing things so we don't know what uh, we're doing them for. And to a company and, uh, and a job, and somebody says, uh, sit here on the table and do this. And five years later, you're still there, but we need to complain and, uh, and say, well, I'm doing uh, this, I don't like it much, but um, why am I going to spend so much uh, time here? Why do we do things? Why do we do the things we do? Uh, typical interview in an interview. Uh, where do you see yourselves in 10 years' time? I would ask, where do you see yourselves in five years' time? And uh, remember, everything that I'm telling you today comes uh, from my personal opinion. I've been working for IBM for five years now, uh, and I started working in the world of cybersecurity for, uh, since I was 12. And then the interview, this is uh, uh, fun. When you come to an interview, when I went to an interview, I was uh, 21, 22, this is an interview, and uh, there were two or 300 uh, people who showed up for the interview. So there was this girl sitting to my right. I think she came from Russia. She spoke like five or six languages. Her uh, The list of languages she spoke was longer than my entire CV. So uh, I thought, oh my god, I'm, uh, I have nothing to do here. I'm totally lost. But this is the important part. You do have a CV and a vital CV. I didn't have work experience, but I had worked for uh, Mundo Hacker for seven years. I had researched, I had created Apple uh, apps, etc. So that gave proof of the fact that I wanted to work for that company, that I liked what I did, and that I had a passion for it. And they told me that in the end, that was the reason why they selected me, rather than having a lot of degrees and speaking a lot of languages. If 
you like it and you love it, they will hire you. Actually, uh, in the um, world of computing, there are a lot of intruders, from, I mean, physicians, uh, chemistry engineers, and many other professionals that are also uh, trying to find a place and a job in our field. Anyway, what I recommend when you go to a job interview, you have to prove that you know the company when they ask you why this company and not another one. You have to have a clear response. Well, I, a relative of mine was hired by a company that uh, she didn't know anything of uh, because, uh, well, she just gave out thousands of CVs and, uh, well, she found her job, the job of her life. And, uh, well, she wasn't quite aware of the company she was um, she was applying for. But uh, don't desperate. Sometimes you are not hired, and not because you're not good enough. Maybe the Russian girl who was sitting next to me wasn't hired because she had uh, two degrees in seven languages. Maybe she was looking for something else. And uh, see the example of my relative. I mean, she just gave away and gave out thousands of CVs until she found the company where she really fit. So, this is what happens in the end. In IBM and in the world in general, there are people who get paid and they are angry at the world. They're just sitting at their desk watching the time go by. And they don't do much about it. So I think during the interview we have to give proof that we know the company, that we can add value to the company. We're not going to be just one more sitting there. We have a CV and we are different. Innovation and disruptive thinking is what companies are currently demanding. Young people now are listened to at the companies. I had the luck of being a trainee and I didn't have to copy anything or, or, or do paper work because they were interested in me they were interested in my opinion they are interested in the technology breed that is coming and not just in the field of video games when it comes to computer security where can we work? Well, I have uh, split it like this. First, consultancy. This part is a little bit apart from it because I like to tell or make a difference between uh, the uh, commercial world and the technical world. In terms of consultancy, there are many uh, issues regarding um, cybersecurity. If you go uh, to the checklist, uh, standardization, etc. Some people like this world. Uh, people who are highly technical are not so fond of it, but uh, there is also the option of technical consultancy. Uh, some clients actually uh, asked me to help them because they've bought very expensive software and they don't know how to do with it. So we help them make things work. That is a nice job as well. It is very rewarding because the client is very satisfied that someone who knows about this is able to help them. So being a troubleshooter is also important and interesting. Then technical world, technical sphere and commercial sphere. In the technical sphere, there are many job opportunities. Our CTO at uh, IBM is a technician, a practitioner. She started programming as everybody else. Then I... I I will talk a little bit more about the commercial side, but maybe there is a way of combining both. The technical world is the one that is providing value to the company because it's you actually who are who is performing the ethical hacking, for example. But uh, you need a commercial part in the entire operation. In some countries, People from uh, the commercial departments uh, get higher salaries and vice versa. That depends on the country. So you have to think about uh, what is more important, someone who knows about how to do things or someone who knows about how to sell things. We will discuss it. 
more at the end. Now, a question you have to ask yourself is, what happens if you're fired tomorrow? Are you irreplaceable? Am I the only person who knows the passwords, for example? Well, companies tend to avoid this more and more. They cannot have the company paralyzed if the only person who knows the passwords falls ill, for example. That would be a great problem for the company. That's why they uh, prevent this kind of situations. Of course, specialization is very important. But be careful, because being too specialized is sometimes uh, dangerous. If you want to be the best hacker in the world, hacker, but not a cyber criminal, let's underline this. So if you want to be the best hacker in the world, you have to spend your whole life doing intrusion tests, pen tests. But uh, there are many different uh, and cool pen tests. Here we have people specialized in networks networks and Wi-Fi networks, uh, people who are ultra-specialized because they love what they do and what they do is absolutely spectacular. But be careful because if you are too specialized in one department in the company, you will never be promoted or changed or uh, you won't have any different job opportunities. That's something you have to consider. So as I was saying, what is more important, being a practitioner or being a seller, uh, a sales rep? Well, in the technical part, we have the product development, the uh, development of existing products to adapt them to clients' needs. Then there is also a part of investigation at Google, HP, IBM, etc. We have research centers in San Francisco, San Jose, New York, uh, Switzerland. There are many uh, places uh, you can work. So there are many cool places uh, you can go and uh, develop. And research, research teams are really fun teams. They wear jeans to work. They have uh, a lot of fun at work. They eat pizzas while they are working. Uh, and if you take a closer look at the IBM research team on uh, LinkedIn, they don't have the real names. They they have their hacker nicknames, so uh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, they know uh, a lot of things and they add a lot of value to the company. Then the integration, if you are in the technical field, you can integrate already bought in products. For example, as I was saying before, some clients don't know how to use a software they are interested in having, so we uh, make things uh, work and we prepare them to uh, to be uh, up and running and then we have the services professional services that is bring me somebody tomorrow who can perform a pen test in my company this is uh, the value that is uh, provided by somebody and somebody's knowledge rather than a product well, on the other hand, we have uh, the sales world, and it's all about selling, of course, but it's interesting as well because it is measurable. It's interesting to ask this to your boss. How do you measure me? How do I know what my goals are or what are my milestones? What goals do I need to achieve in order to be promoted? This is uh, difficult in the technical field, but it's very easy in the sales world. If you need to sell 100 and you sell 120, you are applauded. If you only sell 30, you are fired. So they say there are more career options in sales because it's a very measurable area. So what happens if I'm not sure about what to do? Well, thanks to all these new opportunities that are coming up, there is a little bit of everything. And here's when we come to these new profiles. For example, pre-sales. You can be a sales rep and a technician as well. Here you may have a fixed salary and then a variable salary depending on the amount you sell. This is interesting because 
There are many uh, practitioners uh, who have a variable salary and they have to go to the clients and sell them things. Then there is this very new position, this very new job called CSM, and I encourage you to know more about it because there are more and more opportunities. Uh, and this is called Client Success Manager. It sounds a little bit like uh, uh, nothing really important, but it is indeed. Have you ever heard of SSAS, Sell Software as a Service? This is a sales option where clients have software as a service. So instead of buying a big equipment, they pay you a rent because they don't want to make that upfront uh, investment. So they rent it from you and you just provide a service. For example, the company connects to our SOC and we notify the clients whenever there's an alert. So this SAAS thing is very important, and so is CSM. CSM is the manager that makes sure that the client doesn't leave at the end of the month, because SAAS, it is interesting, but it is a bit tricky, because at the end of the agreed period, clients may just go away and leave. You don't have to go to their place and uh, get the equipment back to your office etc. In this case, they don't have to do anything like that. They just have to click a button. So this is when this uh, profile comes into play. This is somebody with a technical profile, but uh, who goes to the client and asks the client why they want to leave. They ask about what the needs are. And uh, the salesman, the sales rep needs to be specialized because if the client starts asking technical questions, uh, they won't be able to answer them. CSM is a very nice position, it's a very interesting position because it combines sales and development. So if you are a CSM, you become a bridge between the client and the developers. For example, if your machines are in Israel, if the client's machines are in Israel, you can tell the developers uh, to change the parameters so that the uh, customer receives uh, a pop-up box um, if you're interested in, in a certain things to come up. So I uh, encourage you to uh, to learn more about this position. And of course, the CDO. I mean, why not? The chief technology officer is the highest position in uh, the technology uh, field. And um, it's very interesting to decide where a company is going in terms of technology. So this is the role, the profile, this guy reading the paper with the mustache. So this is how I started. I started with uh, development, uh, research, integration, and service, and then I uh, worked as a CSM uh, for some time. Now I uh, do sales all the time, but every time I go to a customer, I just tell them about uh, what their vulnerabilities are, and I tell them, well, if I were a hacker, I would attack you here and here. So that's how I can actively send them, uh, sell them products that may be interesting for them. So, let's assume we are at work now, and here we face a lot of uh, dilemmas. A lot of people work at companies and they don't know what that means, what that entails. For example, there are many multinational corporations such as IBM. 
that give you a lot of money every year to uh, receive training in whatever field you want. 3D animation, go ahead for it. These are very good benefits uh, that uh, large corporations provide uh, you. This is uh, something that you need to ask. Uh, for example, this is very common in California. In California, this is the other way around. Uh, if you go to California, they tell you, come to my company because I'm going to pay social insurance, dentistry insurance, I'm going to invite you to many events. Uh, they have very different uh, and very many benefits uh, for you. And this is a different mentality in uh, California. Coaching also, in many large corporations, you can get a coach if you ask for one. At IBM, for example, we have technical coaches and career coaches. The first one is someone you meet uh, whenever you want, once a month or once every two weeks, etc. And the technical one is about asking, OK, I want to know more about IPS or about uh, security ticketing tools, whatever. So this technical coach tells you, well, I've been doing this for 30 years, and this is how you have to do it. Uh, you meet with that person. That person takes care that you learn more about that. And they always recommend that it is someone from a different uh, department than the one you work in. Your boss cannot be your coach, because the coach is going to tell you, tell your boss that uh, it is time that you promote or it's time that you get a pay rise. So uh, the coach, the, the higher position he or she has, the better, because uh, this person has a broader vision of the company. Uh, if it is the CDO, for example, you can uh, understand the pathway that person followed in order to become a CDO. So uh, it is very interesting. This is from my own experience. When you're talking to people who are at the very top or who are close to retiring, they are usually nicer to you and they are very eager to help youngsters. So don't hesitate to go to them and ask them, I want to be with you in the future. What do you have to do? Then, uh, mentality and challenges. There are many in this profession. This is something that needs to come from you. You need to learn all the time. If you spend one or two months without looking at Twitter or uh, keeping yourself updated, there are thousands of new products and vulnerabilities every day. Therefore, you need to keep updated all the time and do different things. Well, regarding events and communities, there are many events like this one, uh, communities such as uh, Mundo Hacker. There are many options that I encourage encourage you to attend. And the last part I would like to tell you about is the entrepreneurship. I'm going to tell you about uh, stuff that has happened to me in my seven years as an entrepreneur and things I would have liked to know when I started. First of all, it is good to have an idea and develop it. When you're at home and you, you realize you have a good idea and you want to develop, that's great. But you need to uh, set milestones and set dates because I've seen people who've spent 10 years programming a tool. Well, maybe that tool is out of date, or maybe it's time to do something else. And they go, well, yeah, maybe you're right, because, uh, yeah, now it's time to do something different, because 10 years after, that tool is not going to be as uh, as interesting as it was uh, 10 years ago. This is the, the, the case of a friend of mine. Uh, who started seven years ago and who didn't realize that uh, websites were totally different now. Uh, he knows that he won't be able to sell his solution in 20 years' time. So be an entrepreneur, that is great, but do it sensibly and set yourselves short and mid-term objectives. 
And now, what if somebody else has the same idea? And the former slide, or, or one of the first slides, uh, gave you an idea of the very many different things I have done. Why? Because people have come to me asking for help. Because uh, why? Instead of spending thousands of euros in creating a website for you, well, instead of getting uh, a payment and uh, getting paid for creating and developing your entire website, maybe I can uh, take a share in your company. That's not a bad idea because. Um, there are many ways of adding this technological value to uh, companies. So you may participate in a company in many different ways. For example, I can create your website and everything you sell, I uh, take a, a share of it. So if somebody doesn't have enough money to uh, pay you to develop an entire website, well, you can get a share for every item they sell, for example, 2% or something like that. This is uh, well something that I can think of now. But there are thousands of ideas that you can use in order to participate in a company. What's important here? Well, you have to know that a company is like a marriage, legally speaking. You sign a paper, you have legal liability towards one another. And uh, this is very important, and I'm going to tell you a story. In one of the uh, companies I used to have, I'm not telling you the name, we were several partners, and someone said, OK, we buy your company for this amount of money. Well, we said, we don't want to, because this is like our baby. We don't want to get rid of it. But one of the partners said, well, I do want to sell it. So, here's where the problem starts. Well, according to uh, the legal terms, uh, this is divided according to the shares, the percentage. Uh, and at the end of the day, this is very sad. In our case, our partner, our fifth partner, just vanished, disappeared. If you leave the company and you have a share of that company, you need to sign at the end of every month and at the end of every quarter. So we had a lot of problems because this guy leave or left, and we couldn't afford him leaving. So well, we uh, went looking for him. Uh, we had a lot of drinks together, trying to convince him to convince him to sell the shares to us, to the other partners, rather than disappearing because the company is paralyzed if you leave. If we had signed a partner's agreement, this wouldn't have happened. Actually, this guy uh, came back to the company and he's now very happy working with us again. That's why I'm not saying the name. But uh, having this uh, partner's agreement is very interesting because you define all the conditions. I know a guy who signed this agreement, this partner agreement, with his two sisters. It was actually their father who made them do it. Why? Because you never know what can happen. We start with 3,000 euros, but what happens if it's 3 million euros in 10 years' time? Because uh, when uh, there is money at stake, uh, there are always problems invo involved. So you have to think big. In that partner's agreement, uh, you set the conditions, for example, if you want to go for uh, a capital increase. If I provided 1,000 euros, but you provided 100,000, that capital increase needs to be proportional. Otherwise, you're uh, totally uh, in trouble. If that is already set in the partner's agreement, you are protected. You can set the conditions, like uh, you cannot uh, increase the capital by more than this amount, or capital increase cannot take place if uh, at least three partners don't agree and many other conditions that you can set. I'm not telling you to do this yourself. There are lawyers who do 
that. So you can draft this kind of partners agreement. Uh, which is maybe 15 or 20 pages long, because this is what we're going to find at the end of the day. We can sit at our desk and wonder what are we doing, what are we going to do tomorrow, what am I going to do with uh, my free time? Well, there are many interesting things that I've uh, uh, shown to you. Think outside the box. Uh, offer your company that disruptive thinking, saying, can I visit this client and prove them that I can hack them? Well, the company said yes, and I got promoted like that. But if it didn't come from me, if that idea hadn't come from me, I wouldn't have gone this far. Because if I had stayed all the time in my cave working on my computer, I would have probably I wouldn't have uh, been promoted, probably. So I've uh, told you about technical profiles, about sales profiles and many more opportunities. Pen tests are great, but if you cannot explain the customer why it is important uh, to perform those pen tests, they won't buy them. It's important, therefore, to promote that uh, commercial side. We have to uh, think big, think different. We have a lot of opportunities, IoT, uh, the Internet of Things, uh, cybersecurity, many things. Uh, so I invite you to reflect think ahead and I hope my advice uh, is useful so I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have it was my pleasure to be here and I'll be around